Hi, this is Eric from Backend and in this tutorial we will show you how to build fast websites and deploy them to the cloud. So let's get started with our first Backend app. We begin with the basic Hello World example website that you see here. It only consists of an index.html file with bootstrap and jQuery included. And it shows a basic bootstrap panel with Hello World headline and the text not connected. To connect to a backend app, we have first have to include the backend SDK, which we can find on the backend website. So we go to backend.com and look under Developer and then Guide. In the backend JS SDK section, we find the latest SDK version, which we copy and paste into our website. Now that we have the SDK in place, we are ready to connect to an app. For the moment, we will use an existing app called App Starter. To establish a connection, we call the connect method on the global DB object. To wait for the connection, we pass a callback to the ready method, which is executed once the SDK is ready to use. Now we use jQuery to display the status of our connection on the website. So if we now reload the site, we get the message that we are connected to the App Starter backend app. As we see, the backend SDK is now ready and can be used to access the database, register users or execute various other functions. But we are currently only connected to our App Starter test app. And in order to develop our own app, we first need to create a new backend account and launch our own backend app. So let's get to back to backend.com. Click on sign up for free and then either use the register form with the username and password or as in our case one of the login providers like GitHub or Google. Now that we are registered we can start a free app. Let's call this one message wall. Once we click enter backend will spawn a new server instance for us configure a standard app backend and connect it to the content delivery network fastly for automatic cache acceleration. This will take about 30 seconds, so we will fast forward a bit here. Once the app is running, we can open the dashboard where we can do things like create a data model for our app, access logs, upload files or create backend modules. For now we only need to define our data model. As you can see, every new app comes with three predefined classes, device, role and users. For our message wall, we want to create an additional class called message by clicking on the plus sign in the data section. Pressing enter will create our message class and open the schema editor. Our message class first of all needs a text of type string and also an author, which is a reference type to the predefined user class. We can add even more complex attributes with types like date or list or geopoint, but text and author will do it for now. Now we can go to the data tab and insert some test messages. We will go with hello backend and let's code. Now we have our app, data model and test data ready and can go back to implement this into our website. Instead of connecting to the App Starter test app, we now reference our new message wall app. The next step will be to display all the messages on our website. To load these from the database, we use our message class at the global DB object, search for all messages with find and request the result list. Once the result is returned, our callback will be executed. Inside the callback, we want to append each message to our website's container. So for each message, we use the bootstrap panels we've already used for the Hello World example and display the message text. Now let's switch back to the browser and take a look. And there we see our test messages. 
To make things a little bit easier, we've already extracted our code for loading the messages into a function called load messages, which we now simply call once the SDK is ready. Now that we can load and display messages, we would also like to post new ones. For that we create a simple bootstrap form with a single input field for our message text and a submit button. When the form is submitted, we want to save the new message to the database. In order to do that, we register a submit function on the form. First we need to call prevent default to avoid reloading the page. Now we create a new message object and set the text to the value from the input field. Then we simply save the new message object to the database. And to show that the new message was actually saved to the database, we again load all messages, including our new one. To test this, let's go back to the browser and submit some new messages. Let's go with a hello again. As we see, our new message is now loaded and displayed below. Now that you are done with our great website, we want to release it so that everyone can use our great message wall. Fortunately, we can host our website directly on backend. To do this, we go back to the dashboard of our app. Then we go to the file explorer, where we find a predefined www folder. This folder is used for hosting websites and is publicly accessible by default. We simply upload our index.html to the folder and we are done. Now we can access the website via the URL message minus wall dot app dot backend dot com. Of course you can also register your custom domain like message minus wall dot org. You can find the instructions in the backend guide. For a more complex website it can be cumbersome to upload all the files in the dashboard. The recommended approach here is to use the backend CLI. If you have Node.js installed you can simply type npm install minus g backend into your terminal to install the CLI globally. The first step when using the CLI is to log into your backend account. Simply type backend login and fill in your username and password. If you are already inside your project folder, you only need to type backend deploy message wall, which is your app name, and minus f dot to upload all the files in the current directory. As you see, our index.html was uploaded and our deployment is done. If you are developing a more complex website, you may want to use a front-end framework like Angular or React. To make your life easier, Backend already has a lot of startup projects available. Just go to backend.com and look at Developer and then Starter Kits. You can also use the Backend CLI. Just type backend start to list all the starter kits and backend start plus the name of your starter to clone it into your current directory. This will actually take a while, so we'll fast forward a bit here. Once the download and installation is completed, your starter project is ready. Back on the website you will find more information on how to use the starters. If you would like to do a similar tutorial like in this video yourself, go and take our quick start tour. To get to know the backend API and all the available features, take a look at the backend guide. There you can find all explanations and examples. Further details on all available functions can be found in the JS API documentation. If you have any further questions, please use our Stack Overflow tag backend or the chat right on the website.
To wrap up this video, let's take a quick look at the performance your backend website can achieve. To execute our performance benchmark, go to benchmark.backend.com. This benchmark shows a simple news website hosted on different backend as a service vendors, and we compare how fast the website loads compared to backend. On the left, you can choose the vendor to compare with, and if you scroll down, you get more information on the benchmark. Now that's it for this video. We hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and let's build a faster web together.